This is Raw, a podcast by Greta Pools. Series two is The Nature Cure. Hey, welcome to Raw, The Nature Cure. In July 2019, I stepped off a ferry and onto Magnetic Island, a beautiful island near the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland. I was travelling with Julie and we were both attending Shakti Prem's Magnetic Island Alkaline Cleanse, a seven-day yoga retreat. The food supplied at the retreat would be based on the 1930s alkaline cleanse diet I wrote about in my book, Gut Instinct, Mrs Snook's Diet. It was a diet Mrs Snook inherited from her mentor, the American-trained naturopath Alice Capone, who learnt it from pioneering naturopath Benedict Lust. After a short ferry ride, Julie and I disembarked and were met by Shakti Prem driving her ancient white Land Cruiser. Shakti Prem is a German-born Australian. She lives in Italy half of the year and runs yoga retreats in Tuscany. Both she and I have completed Mrs Snook's full three-month alkaline cleanse program. I asked Shakti Prem why she wanted to use the first chart of that diet at her retreat. Why I decided to run it was I had the great experience when I when I started doing it, when I did it in uh, November, um, or starting November, sometime mid-November, mid towards end November, and then I did it actually for 14 weeks. I had to really look and stop myself. <laughs> um, so I loved it. That was the first thing. But basically to thinking of even running it was also prompted a little bit, I think, by some of the yoga students who saw me then every week and to the feedback, you know, that whatever, maybe it's not, I'm not very good in talking like this about myself, but like that there was glowing or, you know, more energy or I would just beam or some, they saw a physical difference. Not only that I lost a few kilos that I had put in, on before in Italy, but um so it was really, they saw a, um, a positive change that people wanted that, oh, look, but I can't do it because, you know, um, I don't have the discipline. And I thought, well, you know, then I guide you through that. So I think eight days to do it, to get people on this first chart, which is the, you know, the, the starting point is a bit the, the toughest thing usually to, to, to make such a big change in your daily routine and with the eating and which of course has an effect on your socializing as well because certain things, you know, you, yeah, it's a big change. Townsville is a regional city in the north of Queensland. The ferry for Magnetic Island leaves from here. It is where Marie, the youngest of Mrs Snook's seven children, lives. Marie and I had spoken on the phone and exchanged emails but not met in person before now. I emailed her about the retreat and she offered to pick me up when I arrived. We had lunch and tried to do an interview in a few cafe locations, succeeding best in her air-conditioned four-wheel drive parked near the ferry terminal. Murray, just wanted to get some thoughts from you about, you know, this revival of interest in um, Mrs Snook's diet and now this retreat. What do you make of it all? I'm quite amazed at it all that something that started off so many years ago has been um, had a revival now so the fact that it's um, on Magnetic Island and I'm no longer living in Perth but now living in Townsville and have been for 10 years and then this has all all happened and it's just amazing I think so it's sort of on your doorstep it is on my doorstep (laughs) and uh, I think you were one of the first people in the family that I spoke to about when I started to research the book um So um, what do you think your mother would make of it all? I think she'd be absolutely thrilled. I think she'd be over the moon. Um, I'm sure she'd want to go to the retreat. (laughs) Be a guest speaker. She might take over running the retreat. She might take over, (laughs) She might be correcting a few people. (laughs) That's what's her nature. (laughs) So, yeah, no, I think she'd be very happy that um, her work hasn't died off. Um, I think that was a big concern to her, especially um, her children not wanting to take it over, that her children had other plans for their own lives. So um, to have this interest in her lifelong work, um, I think she'd be tremendously proud. I mean, the idea of nutrition is so being so central to health and that was really what she was all about, wasn't she? Exactly. I, I, I don't think she was ever against doctors. She always um, invited doctors to come to the clinic. 
Um, but she truly believed that diet um, was the way to rectify any health issues. And um, I think she was right. I know she was right. <laughs> and and so what's interesting to me is when I see my friends and that, as um, I was brought up on almond milk, um, I was brought up not eating any red meat at all. We had minimal um, bits of chicken or fish in our diet, but apart from that, we, we were vegetarian. And um, I truly believe from the basis of that upbringing is why I'm so healthy today. I've never had a cold. I've never been to the doctor. I've never had any illnesses. I'm perfectly healthy. And um, I really believe it's the background, the upbringing that's um, instilled that in my body. She was an extremely strong woman, a strong mother, a strong leader. And also I think when you believe in something wholeheartedly, and let's face it, she cured herself. So she could see the results of Alice Capone's diet and um, she knew it worked. And when you can see that and know that, how can you stop doing it, mm. you know? So she like her whole um, life was to help other people um, uh, basically teaching other people what she'd been taught. So... Um, she's she seen it work in her own life and so she had, had proof it's not like I just think of a doctor if they go to medical school and yeah they learn all the theory and everything but unless you've lived that life and been through that disease and seen the results of whatever therapies you use then where's your conviction well she had the conviction because she'd been through osteoarthritis and other things and she would cured herself so and it was quite unusual in those days for a woman to have her own business, to have her own career. Yes, yeah. But that was all driven by this need to... Especially with seven children. She would say, you need to do this. And if you're not going to do this, then I can't help you. So she was very adamant and strong and quite demanding that they had to follow the diet to the letter. Yeah. But it was that strength that um, saw almost a fear in them. If I go back to Mrs Snook and she and I haven't done what she's told me to do, I'm going to be in trouble. Do you know what I mean? Certainly a few of her clients have mentioned this <laughs> fear of <laughs> getting on the wrong side of her yeah. or yeah. receiving a tongue lashing yeah, and so. not quite recovering from it. Magnetic Island was the name bestowed by the British sea explorer Captain James Cook. The story goes that on June the 7th in 1770, as Cook sailed past Magnetic Island, he reported a magnetic pull on the ship's compass. I mention this because I did not realise I needed to turn off the Wi-Fi signal in my phone when recording. Otherwise you get this awful intermittent crackling sound in the recording, which I did, briefly thinking maybe it was the magnetic forces of the island before I realised it was the Wi-Fi. I've only been able to salvage small grabs of my interviews, but first up is Diane, a youthful 70-year-old with a stylish blonde bob. There's probably two reasons that I can think of straight off the top of my head of why I came. Um, I have been having some gut problems in terms of frequent bowel movements, etc., um, that I've been, you know, had advice on and nothing seems to have worked to date. Um, so that's one reason, um, but I th also think that it makes perfect sense to me to give your gut a rest. When it works 24-7, and I'm now 71, it's, it's worked all that time, um, relentlessly, without stop. So I think, hey, you need a rest. <laughs> so, so that's the physical reason. The other reason is that I have coffee every day. Um, several days a week I'll have a glass of wine at five o'clock um, with my husband. That's, you know, a congenial time to have a glass of wine. Um, I virtually eat what I want, um, not worrying that I'm a little bit overweight. Um, 
And I want to see how I respond to not having those things. I want to see if it's an addiction or if it's not. Um, there's only one way to find out. And, and this is, seems to me to be a lovely, safe environment to find it out, um, rather than try to do it at home. What would you say your health um, is like? You know, I know you've mentioned some problems now, but overall, have you sort of had any particular issues that you've been dealing with at all over the years? No, I think, to be honest, I'm very, very fortunate. I've had really good health. Um, I do have uh, uh, low thyroid activity and I um, take thyroxin for that. Um, and blood pressure at the moment is fluctuating, but that could be for a whole number of reasons, or it could just be that I'm overweight. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, but, but other than that, you know, I, I've been very fortunate that really my health is quite good. Mm. And what do you do to keep, you know, in terms of wellness, what do you... Mm. Um, well, firstly, I drink a lot of water. <laughs> Rule number one, when in doubt, drink a lot of water. Um, I take supplements and, um, and exercise. I do Pilates and yoga and some walking. Um, aqua aerobics, um, nothing much more strenuous than that. Um, and just, well, meditation is a very important part of my life too. And I think that keeps everything centred. So, so that's possibly number one and then everything else follows from that. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that if you do all those things you're going to have great health. It doesn't work that way, I know. Genetically, some people are you know, disposed to having all sorts of ailments, and I guess I've just been very fortunate up to this stage. But I'm conscious that its health needs to be looked after. I don't take it for granted, particularly at this age. And I'm really conscious that I have to keep moving. Um, I get very stiff if I stop moving. So. And you make the time to do your meditation. It's a priority. Mm. It's, um, everything else flows much better if I do that. Mm. It's, that's the only reason. It's because my life's so much better. On day one of the retreat, Julie was quite cheerful. I knew that I wouldn't have the willpower to, to try it uh, at home, um, that I need to go away and be in a sort of confined environment and supported. Um, yeah, so I'm interested to see, you know, what effects it has to lose a little bit of weight. Um, and, yes, yeah, and also, also read a lot about the benefits of fasting. And so I think, you know, this diet in the initial stages certainly is, you know, is, by, you know, I think some of the benefits might be due to, there's a fasting aspect as well as it being, you know, plant. Yeah. yeah, there's a calorie restriction or a reduced calorie intake for the first two yeah. weeks anyway on the, on the chart. Um, and so is there any particular issues that you're hoping that it might help you with? Well, yeah, I have a couple of chronic um, health conditions, um, arthritis due to in my ankle and a, few, a couple of other joints. And also um, reflux, uh, acid reflux. So I'm just, it'd be interesting to see if the change in diet particularly helps my reflux. And also that, you know, there's evidence that fast, fasting is sort of, gives your body time to, you know, stop and repair and decreases, you know, inflammatory markers. So that would help with my arthritis. So I'm interested to see what effect it has on those conditions. And also, I guess, general energy levels and well-being um and what sort of arthritis is it that you have it's with? it's osteoarthritis due to a um an old break injury yeah that's pretty tricky too. but um yeah arthritis does run in my family you know family history of arthritis and allergies so at the retreat we follow a daily routine where we gather at 7 a.m in the kitchen and drink our morning juice in silence. And then we take a walk, also in silence. And then we do half an hour of yoga. And then it's time for a breakfast of fruit, just the one kind of fruit for each meal. Our days are punctuated by juice and meal times. We do yoga, meditation, and yoga nidra. 
We're silent 12 hours a day, from our evening meditation until breakfast the next morning. Our phone use is limited to 30 minutes a day at a set time. Every day we swim, hike, go for walks and watch the sunsets. We stroll past beachside cafes knowing our strict diet prevents us from entering. We all enjoy the yoga. However, neither Julie nor Diane are enthusiastic about the regimented diet. I'm doing okay. I know what to expect food-wise. I talked to Fiona, who has flown in from the retreat from Alice Springs, where she has lived for the past two decades. I think I'm at a point in my life where I need to change things to become more gentle, soft, and do a little bit less rather than do more. So I'm looking at somehow a way of incorporating that into my intention. Um, Yeah, so I've still got to work on that. I've only just thought about that this morning. And do you have any particular uh, health issues or physical issues that you're hoping that the retreat might help you with or is it more of a total experience for you? Um, Yeah, no, I've been feeling a lot quite stiff. Like I usually do a lot of yoga and the last few months I've been studying and then I've been on holidays so it's my diet and exercise regimes being out so it would be good to sort of reset everything. Um, not that I eat badly, but we've probably get drunk more wine and eaten out more. And sitting around studying, I tend to eat more and I feel like I put on a few kilos over winter. So it's also to lose some weight, but more about um, feeling better in my body through a cleaner diet for a while to get rid of that stiffness in the movement and also using diet to do that as well because I think when you have too much stodginess in your body you start feeling stiff as well. Um, and have you, do you, would you say that you're someone who um, takes care of yourself? Like do you focus on wellness? Yeah, yeah. I teach yoga and massage and um, yeah, so I swim and I walk. Yeah, so I'm quite active. Have you always been like that or is it something that you've... Yeah. 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 Um, so in a way, this is actually toning it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's what you were looking for? Yeah, I think so. I think having a big cleanse out and a, a moment where you decide from here on it's going to be a little bit different. By day three, after celebrating her birthday with what she calls cabbage juice... Diane has decided to lean into the retreat experience. So, Diane, it's day three. Um, What do you think of um, the retreat so far? How have you found your experience? Uh, Yeah, it's an interesting journey. I I was thinking this morning it's like um, mountain climbing for the soul (laughs) for me. (laughs) I'm not a physical mountain climber. Um, But... I was interested how I sort of bounced into the whole thing, not knowing much about it. And then as days gone on, the reality of what I've actually signed up for has hit me. (laughs) Um, So I've taken it on as a personal challenge. And um, how are you feeling physically at the moment? Oh, physically quite well. Um, Except for the fact that just before I came here, I somehow... Uh, hurt my right arm I think it might be a nerve thing so it means that I can't lift it terribly high and that interrupts my yoga practice which is rather distressing Um, but so be it I'll see what we can do about it while I'm here I think I'm still on track with what I set out and, and that is to find out my weaknesses and strengths in such a personal challenge where I can't just walk away when I feel like it. Um, I'm here for the duration and um, and I have to stop the inner fight with myself and, and accept that and not only accept it, but accept it with joy and gratitude. So on day three, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> What's been the toughest part for you so far? Um, maybe the discipline of the whole um, retreat um, 
and also too, strangely enough, the focus on food. Um, because at home, I don't really have that focus. I don't eat if I'm not hungry. I don't. I've got lots of things going on, so I don't have a focus. But the only thing that surprised me is this morning I was quite teary when I couldn't balance in my yoga. Tears started to stream down my cheeks, and I feel that I could weep at any moment. So I don't know. I have to have a look and see where that's coming from. Oh, one thing I, w I was curious mm -hmm. about, did you have any particular gut health issues or anything else that you were kind of hoping a gut cleanse? W were there any physical reasons that you wanted to do a gut um, cleanse diet? Or was it just about rebalancing and, you know, um, just well, part of a wellness? Yeah, there, there were a couple of things that I don't know whether it will address or not, and I'm a bit doubtful about it. Um, my blood pressure's been getting higher um, to the point where I'm on um, on the cusp of being hypertensive. Uh, but it's very irregular, so we're not quite sure which way it's going to go. I'm not in any medication for it. I'd like to be able to naturally lower it. Um, I have had some gut problems, um, which has also been looked at, but nothing has been identified, um, which has caused, a, you know, a frequency of going to the toilet. Um, and that's been uncomfortable at times. That seems to have lessened a bit since I've been here. Um, strangely enough, with all the fruit and so on I've been eating, I would have expected it to be more. Um, and one of the reasons for getting my blood pressure down, apart from the obvious, is that I have tinnitus. And um, and that distresses me sometimes, and that also causes an Im a lack of balance, which I think um, shows up in my yoga as well. So I was hoping that by if this could lower the blood pressure in some way, by actually losing weight, that will that will help. Um, <coughs> that it might also ease the tinnitus. That's a big ask. I don't know that it will do that. Mm. But we'll have a look at the end of the time. Do you think you'll notice a difference in eight days, or is it, um, uh, or you're hoping to, you, this is a journey to see whether you do notice a difference? Yes, I think it would be very hopeful, overly hopeful to expect a difference in eight days. Mm. But um, obviously, apart from anything else, because of the type of food we're eating, we're going to lose weight. Mm. Losing weight normally lowers the blood pressure a bit. Um, and if the blood pressure lowered a bit, it could help the tinnitus. Yep. So it would be an interesting discovery. I checked back in with Julie on day three. I was worried that I'd be hungry and I haven't been, but um, the food is getting uh, a bit monotonous um, and I'm starting to crave, you know, warm, savoury food, um, particularly at, you know, night when it's been um, colder. So that's getting a bit more... Uh, mentally challenging. And how did you, you, you mentioned yesterday that you had a lot of energy. Yeah, I, I felt good. Um, yeah, and, went, and going snorkelling for a walk, and for a walk helped that. But um, then last night I sort of got uh, headachey and um, yeah, sort of hit a bit of a wall there and didn't sleep very well. So I'm not, uh, my energy levels are down today, definitely. The recording static got the best of my interview at this point with Julie, but she goes on to say she's not happy with the diet. She feels eating the grapes for dinner at 6pm is upsetting her acid reflux. Julie has continued to take her acid reflux medication while on the retreat. She thinks about leaving the retreat early, but in the end she stays. She does not eat the grapes in the evening. We soldiered on. I checked back in with Diane on day five. I'm feeling really good. Um, we've just been for a lovely swim in the surf, beautiful. And I'm feeling lighter. I'm feeling more positive. I'm learning things about myself. Um, and all in all, I'm, I've relaxed into the week and it's very positive. Um, do you think you're feeling any effects of the diet at this point? Um, well, I'm certainly feeling lighter. Today, I've had more energy than I have for the past five days. Um, so that's always a good sign. 
Fiona is also doing well. The intention she has set at the retreat is to continue on with the diet for its full three months. Here she is on day five. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling positive about uh, this week, meaning it's going to make a change ongoing for me, not just this week of a cleanse, that my intention before I came was that I would find some clarity and change the way I'm currently doing my work. And not just my work, but just I've started to become a little bit stagnant and stale in my um in the way I am in even not wanting to get out of bed and becoming a little bit lethargic and, yeah, just stagnant and heavy. So I was hoping that this would change that, that I would come into the sunshine, do some yoga, have some healthy food and that would lift and it has. Um, But what I wasn't expecting was some of the more philosophical and thought-provoking things like Shakti Prem mentions a word each day or each evening which we think about overnight and yeah all those little things that have added to to the process rather than it just be a diet or a cleanse it actually has been emotionally challenging it's thought-provoking Um, but not stressful, at ease, and we've had some lovely swims. And I think my belief in the process of staying on it, like I thought, oh, it's probably going to be too hard to stay on it, but I'm I'm believing that I will. Is there sort of (laughs) any particular reason why you want to, to go on for the three months? Well, because I think... Clearing my mind has been more of a noticeable thing than just the stomach. Yeah, so I'm impressed with how much it has cleared my mind a little bit or opened my mind to other things. But also, I think to really give something a go, if you're going to try it, you want to stay on it for the length that it's meant to be. And I have got some arthritis in my right hip and my right knee's creaky, my ankles, and I'm just feeling a bit, have been feeling a bit stiff and sore. And with with Mrs Snook saying that it will heal your arthritis and other things, I'm... I'd like that. I mean, I'm in my 50s now and I don't want to get older and feel stiffer and sore. And if I can do something about that now and live the next 50 years or so um, feeling more free, I, I would want to take that on. So I'm going to do the diet and see if that actually does do something mm. for me. Yeah. A week after the retreat, I caught up with Shakti Prem to ask her how she thought things went. Overall, I think it went really well. I think I, for me, I felt I was on the ball the whole time, but that's 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 normal, I suppose. Um, it went well um, because the focus was not only on the food, but it was not only on yoga. It was really I, I felt it was more a holistic approach. And people went through their ups and downs and, you know, and it's not that everyone has to like everything constantly. But overall, I think for, for me, I, I went, when I drove home, I thought, yeah, that was a success that really people got something and, you know, they, and, and I got the feedback and I got the thank you card that, that, <laughs> that, that reflected something of what was real. So I would think definitely it was a, it was a success. For me, it definitely was a success. Although I knew Diane had done very well. Shakti Prem tells me the final outcomes were a surprise, even to Diane. On her physical, on, on the results that she had, apart from that she could shift the whole thing of 
of resisting the things that she didn't like into accepting and flowing and learning because she, yeah, she was working on herself for years and, you know, does meditation also for years already before she could shift that in herself. But the, the results that she had on a physical level was that she was surprised about her blood pressure went down and she always had really high blood pressure. I think she's taking medication, I'm quite sure. And... Um, her urine the first time in her life, you know, she tried all sorts of things before. Alkaline, she couldn't believe her eyes. She tried it with a few, um, what is it called, strips, um, strips to, to, to test test mm. strips. You know, she couldn't believe it. She was, she was thrilled. And, of course, she lost some kilos, although she hadn't sort of weighed herself. But, you know, people felt it on their belts and on their clothing. We all lost weight. Yeah. So, so she was just really thrilled. She was just... Yeah, clarity. She felt fresh and new, and and these physical results were, of course, I mean, amazing. And this lady is seventy plus, I think. Yeah. I also caught up with Fiona six months after the retreat. I asked her how she fared. Well, uh, the retreat was great, and I went back to Alice quite inspired, and stayed on the cleanse for probably another two months quite strictly and then started to add in other things and sort of gradually I mean now I'm not on the cleanse at all um I guess I felt fantastic while I was on it and it was great uh well I don't know I can't remember now why I ended up going off it in the end but I think it was winter and it just became a little bit I was getting back to work and yeah, it just became something that I wanted to incorporate some other things. So I just gradually incorporated it a few things at a time and then gradually became back to a normal sort of diet. Although I probably have been eating less bread and red meat and all those sort of things since then. Yeah. So... Um did you, you look like you've lost weight? So did, did was that something that happened? Did you notice that at the as a um, outcome of the retreat? And the I, I think that it? did. Yeah, I de- definitely did. That sort of inspired me to keep going, and I felt better, and I just sort of gradually lost a bit of weight, which helped with my joints and stuff. And I think if I would have kept going with that, that would have been... I would have liked to have stayed on it longer. And I think the retreat's really good for that because it does help you stay more focused on it. Um, But it does become tricky to do once you're a bit long-term down the track and you're doing other things. You had to plan for it and be prepared to shop and all that type of thing, which in a way sometimes makes it easier Mm. because somebody else is telling you what to do and what you should eat and what you shouldn't. And I think that was sort of, in a way, a good thing because you don't have to think about it. You're just told, okay, this is what you're eating or this is what this week is going to be. So that was good. Um, I think it definitely was anti-inflammatory. I think I, I did feel better. I think... Definitely my skin got better, my joints got better, I did lose weight, all those sort of things. Um, What else? Oh, it's about the intention of uh, slowing down or thinking about, um, you know, what you were doing in your life, your workload. Yeah, I was too busy before all that, so I have slowed that down, done less and reassessed where everything is I think the the actual cleanse is a good thing to do probably maybe twice a year just to to reassess where you're at and what you're doing and yeah it does refocus you you feel like you're cleansing out of mind as well as body getting the juices together and planning for that if you're going out of the house a bit is a bit tricky um, I had a few events that I had to go to where I was just going to have salads and that actually turned out better than I thought and was easier than I thought. Um, it sort of takes you back in time before you drank or before you did other things too. So not that I drink a lot, but um, when you socialise a lot as you get older, it sort of just becomes the norm. And to actually say no, it's sometimes funny. It takes you back to even when you're 18, 19 and you're going out all night and just dancing and stuff on soda water and stuff. And it was great. And I just thought, oh, yeah, this is really fun, you know. 
it's nice to challenge those things. So you just, not that I think it's a problem drinking and going out, but it is nice to do it without and just, it's sort of almost more fun because you go back to that experience of feeling fresh and new like, when you were just first socialising and going out to parties and dancing by yourself. Yeah, it's, it's one thing, and I think we noticed it on Magnetic Island, that when you're on a, such a lovely spot and you're going to the beach or something, you usually go to a cafe and you have a coffee or you, you sit yeah, down. Yeah, it's not confused by food. Your yeah, experience, you, you it's, actually, yeah, it's actually nice to in, indulge yourself in the activity that you're doing rather than mixing it up with food or we're going out for dinner. It becomes about the socialisation and the people, not so much what the food's like or what's the drink going to be or whatever. Thanks to Shakti Prem, Julie, Diane and Fiona for sharing their retreat experiences with me. And thanks to Marie. It was great to meet you. And thanks to you for listening and joining us on Magnetic Island. Raw is a podcast by Greta Pools. Subscribe to Raw The Nature Cure where you get your podcasts or visit the website, all one word, rawthepodcast.com.